Determining the inverse of a matrix. Well, we start with the following example. So suppose we have a 2 by 2 matrix. A is 3, 5, 1, 2. Of which we know that it is indeed invertible, but that's not the question here. But what we want to do is how to find the inverse matrix. Yeah, such that A times the inverse equals inverse of A times A equals the 2 by 2 identity matrix. So actually what we try to find is the first condition here is that we want to show that A times the inverse, the supposedly inverse, equals the matrix with only ones on the diagonal and zero outside. Well, actually, how do we calculate the product? Well, the product is the first matrix here times the first column here, which gives one zero. So three times x1 plus five times x21 is on the left part, etc. etc. So we can actually form the matrix product and consider the elements. Yeah, so this this matrix should be the matrix on the right here. So we know that all elements should be the same on the left and the right. So we may actually write this down as the following systems of linear equations. So we're looking for x11 and x21 satisfying these two linear equations and for x12 and x22 there should be this element should be 0 and this element should be 1 so we're looking for a solution of x11 also the first column of uh, the the inverse matrix should be a times x11 x21 should be equal to 1 0 and x12, so the second column of the, of the inverse matrix, should be the solution of ax equals e2, so 0, 1. So now we focus on just one procedure, one type of notation that we can use to find what in general for other dimensions or so 3 times 3 4 by 4 other other matrices what the inverse should be like so actually we started off with the matrix a 3 5 1 2 and we were looking for the first column of the inverse was a solution to the following system e1 over here so we're going to solve we look at the augmented matrix and use it to solve this system and we had another condition the second column of our inverse matrix will be a solution to ax is e2 and we're going to solve it through the augmented matrix but now with respect to e2 so now we keep track of both columns at the same time, 1, 0, and 0, 1. So here we get the inverse matrix on the right. Since we know that actually finding solutions to systems AX is E1 and AX is A2, we try to bring the system back in... in uh, in a reduced row echelon form. So, in general, these will be the same operations on one matrix. So, actually, now we have a candidate pivot 
one and we reduce we get rid of the threes here by the operation to subtract three times the second row so on the first augmented matrix we get the following and on the second one we get something similar only we get at the first element over here we get minus three since we subtract three times this one so minus three one so actually if we summarize it on the right hand side we can combine the, the, these efforts over here for the two different augmented matrices in just one matrix so the first column is uh, is just the same so it's one zero and the second column has is turned into minus three one so now we're going to switch r2 the, the second row and the first row yeah to to create the staircase we we want so performing this operation on the first matrix use this one on the second matrix it use this one one two one 0 minus 1 minus 3 and if we combine these efforts in one matrix we end up with 1 2 0 1 0 1 and 0 minus 1 1 minus 3 so now we have one pivot the upper left pivot in the first column so we're done with the first column. So now we multiply by minus the second row by minus one in order to achieve to get another pivot. Yeah, so on the first matrix, the augmented matrix, we get this, and the second one we get three over here. And the combined effort again in the combined augmented matrices we get The matrix 1, 2, 0, minus 1, and 0, 1, minus 1, and 3. So, what are we doing next? Well, we're finally done if we get a 0 over here, which can be done by subtracting 2 times row 2 from row 1. So here we are, we end up with actually the identity matrix over here, which is the reduced row echelon form, and we get minus 2 over here, or 2 over there. And 1 minus 2 times 3 is minus 5, so this is for 3. So in the combined matrix we get here the identity matrix I2 and on the right hand side 2 minus 1 minus 5 and 3 so what we get here is that we may read the solution for this system which would give us the first column of the inverse matrix of A this system would give us the second column. Well, actually, here, these co here are these columns. So the first column is just 2 minus 1. And the second column is minus 5, 3. So in particular, the inverse is given by x11, x21, and x12, x22, which is just a concatenation of these two columns, which is equals the matrix that we find here. So A inverse is just 2 minus 5 minus 1, 3.
So the conclusion is the following. To find the inverse from a matrix A, we just form the matrix, the augmented matrix. We glue A together with its n times n identity matrix. Now we write A on the left, the identity matrix on the right, and we determine the reduced row echelon form of this matrix. So the ref of A with the identity matrix. And this gives a new matrix where on the left hand side we get the n times n identity matrix and the matrix B. Now this matrix B is just exactly the inverse of the matrix A. Well, why is this? Well, you write the inverse in columns. So let's say these columns are of type XI. It's the ith column. Then we know that A times its inverse is A times this matrix written down in, in columns. And it equals the identity matrix with columns, with respective columns, which are the natural unit vectors. So A times the first column gives E1. A times the second column of the inverse gives E2, etc. So the ith column of the inverse solves a special, a special linear equation which is given by Ax equals the ith natural unit vector. Yeah, and the A inverse exists, so this u A is invertible, so we know that this solution is is unique. So now we can calculate it. How do we do this? Well, we proceed. We form the augmented matrix corresponding to this equation, Ax is Ei. And we know that the uh, reduced row echelon form of this matrix will be the identity n times n identity matrix, and on the right hand side, Xi, because we can read Xi on the right hand side by bringing A back to its row reduced echelon form. So we get N equations of this type. So if we glue these matrices together, we get the ref of A and the identity matrix on the right hand side is gluing these EIs together. Then we get, following the same operations, the same Gauss-Jordan operations, we get a new matrix. A is brought back to the n times n identity matrix, and on the right hand side we see the gluing of the, uh, we glue the columns together, xi. And these columns xi are just A inverse. So now we got a means to, um, to calculate 
the inverse of a matrix is by just uh, reducing A concatenated with the n times n identity matrix. 